You're watching Ramping Up Your English, an educational support program for intermediate level English learners who want to improve their English. We take a content-based approach to help you advance your level of English proficiency. This is segment two of episode 70. Our last episode focused on wildlife refuges. Now there are many efforts to support wildlife and numerous books from which you can learn about these efforts. A book entitled Animal Kingdoms is about wildlife sanctuaries around the world. Natural America beautifully tells the story of the positive impact of public land in the United States and how many areas of this land support wildlife. In the making of the national parks, we learn about how national parks came into being and the role these parks play in supporting wildlife and the ecology. Canada's national parks tells the story of the magnificent national parks in that great country, and the book Enduring Treasures is about national parks throughout the world. Creating national parks is an idea that has spread worldwide because of the benefits both to wildlife and the people who visit and live near them. The book Yellowstone to Yukon is all about providing wildlife a corridor through much of North America for the benefit of the wildlife that gets cut off from areas they need to thrive and reproduce. All these books are from the National Geographic Society. While the content is written at a high level of English, I recommend these to my viewers. The books are well organized and illustrated with National Geographic's award-winning photography. That should provide the context for reading comprehension, especially for viewers of this program. The more you know about a subject, the greater your comprehension will be of the target language. That's because the language input from listening and reading is more comprehensible if you're familiar with the subject. That puts in motion a positive feedback loop that builds comprehension. Now, I've been fortunate to see the birds from time to time, and it's a great, uh, it's, well, I'll tell you this. This great blue heron is what you're looking at. Now, walking through the farm in Louisiana, I would see one rise up on those long wings from a drainage ditch, always complaining with an almost dinosaur-like caw. Now living in Oregon, I still seem to scare up a blue heron when I walk along creeks or when paddling my canoe. I've even seen a couple of heron rookeries where they raise their young up in the trees. While not hunted for meat, great blue herons were once hunted for their beautiful feathers. The great blue heron spends most of its life cycle alone spearing fish and small mammals along creeks and bayous and rivers. Even more pressure was placed on great white herons, great egrets, and snowy egrets. Their feathers were sought by people wanting that plumage in their hats. Now, it was a fashion at the time, and only strict laws put an end to the practice. These birds have a central place in the wetlands habitat. With the high price paid for their plumage, hunters were motivated to hunt them down and kill them by the thousands. Naturally, their numbers diminished under these conditions, and they were certainly endangered. The protection given by state and federal laws helped the populations of egrets and herons rebound to healthy levels. It's now unusual not to see these birds when visiting the countryside from Florida to Louisiana to California. The recovery also came when wearing bird feathers fell out of fashion. Now those remain on the books today, those laws, and with good reason. Wearing pelts from certain mammals also fell out of fashion in the 1970s and 80s, but that fashion trend is making a comeback. So if that happens with feathers, birds like these may sorely need the protection provided by these laws. Now the bird I heard the most about growing up in Louisiana is the duck. Every winter when the rice crop is safely out of the field, Farmers and their friends can be found in their duck blinds, hoping to come home with this game fowl. Now, mallard ducks, pinheads, and other species of ducks migrate to Louisiana for the winter, and hunters build duck ponds and blow into duck calls to lure them into shotgun range. 
Now, mallard ducks are numerous enough that these hunting activities don't put any danger for them of extinction. But it wasn't always that way. When government was very limited and hunting unregulated, the population of many game birds began to fall. Hunting organizations strove to keep these waterfowl from being hunted to extinction. The hunting community largely accepted the regulations along with the habitat conservation efforts that supported the migratory birds. Now, one of the oldest organizations to protect and conserve game birds is Ducks Unlimited. This artwork is from Ducks Unlimited, showing various species of birds that are being conserved as a result of efforts by Ducks Unlimited. Now, as you can see, the reach of Ducks Unlimited is not limited only to ducks. Now, my first memory of ducks had to do with duck hunting. A yearly ritual in Louisiana was to buy your duck stamp. This was affixed to the hunting license to allow the holder to hunt ducks. Now, besides controlling the number of hunters, this purchase raised money for restoring the wetland habitat on which the ducks depended. Hunting ducks means using a gun. Now, while I did some hunting when I was a teenager, I soon found that I preferred the camera to the shotgun. That doesn't mean I'm against fair and regulated hunting. Fairness has to do with meeting the animal at least somewhat on its own terms. Trying to call down a flock of birds to a pond or stalking a land animal, the animal should have a chance to outsmart or outmaneuver the hunter. That's called sportsmanship, in contrast to baiting or chumming. Now, a well-regulated hunt can keep animal populations in balance. When any animal overpopulates, serious problems can follow, such as disease and damaging the habitat's carrying capacity. In other words, overpopulating animals can do long-term damage to the environment that would otherwise sustain them. In my view, hunters have a role in the balance of nature, and it's a way that many people connect with nature. While bow hunting is becoming increasingly popular in the Pacific Northwest, most hunting involves guns. At this time in the United States, we're undergoing yet another debate about guns. The difference this time is that after another school shooting, young people all over the country are demanding change in the gun laws. I'm very proud of these kids. It looks like they'll hold out for real change. One thing's for certain, the school shooting has got to stop. Now our kids need to be safe in school and I support anything that will increase that safety. It seems to me that banning assault weapons would go a long way toward that goal. 